It's a privilege to, uh, to have a few minutes here to talk to you about a mother's acceptance speech because um, I think that the scripture that I'm going to talk from this morning is one of the most uh, intriguing verses of scripture that I frankly have ever read. And, and I think probably one of the, 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 the most telling two or three verses in the entire Word of God. Um, because of what it says. And today is Mother's Day as we have already identified. And uh, this mother was doing something and going through something that um, had been prophesied. Started in the book of Genesis. And uh, all of a sudden, this teenage little Jewish girl <clears throat> runs into something that we would say motherhood, and Juliana said it today, transforms your life. But this little girl, what she did transformed the world. All right. Come on. It transformed the world. Paul said so in Colossians 1.13. When he said that you have been translated out of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. What she did translated the world. So I want you to stand with me and let's read from Luke chapter 1 and verse 38. Probably some of the most faith-filled words that the word of God, if you think about the scenario, has ever written. Let's read. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Father, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you today, God, that you can open our that you have opened our eyes that we can see, our ears that we can hear, and our heart that we can understand what the word of God says. God, that as our hearts and eyes and ears are open, that we can then apply the word of God directly to our lives. So that that word does what Paul said it would do in Colossians 1 and 13, translate us from darkness into the piercing light of the Son of God. And so that our life that we live in the flesh would be lived after the faith of that Son of God. Bless us today, God. Thank you for manifesting yourself we sense your presence. We, we sense your spirit. We ask you today to speak to your people through your spirit. Minister to their spirit through your spirit. And let us today, God, recognize, understand, and know that we have been in the presence of Almighty God. And that is a great place to be. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. And you may be seated. One of the most faith-filled scriptures in the entire Word of God is a little line given by Mary when she said, And I, the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to your word, according to thy word. And I want you to recognize that when she made that comment, the angel didn't stay around to give her another pep talk. He didn't stay around to say to her, well, now you know, I know you said that, and boy, I'm so glad you've agreed to do that. Uh, it makes me feel good. You know how we preachers would do to those of you that we asked you to do something. We'd pat you on the back and we'd tell you you're the greatest thing since sliced bread, rock and roll, and the dollar bill. And you would be just as happy as if you had good sense about it because the pastor had said, the angel didn't do that. The Bible said when she said that, when she said to him, I, the handmaiden of the Lord, be it done unto me according to your word. The Bible said the angel departed from her. And she had by those words of faith received and accepted. She had made an accepted speech that was heard and resonated in glory. Amen. She had said words that heaven had heard and that heaven had already begun to move on because the angel made some promises to her that I'm going to talk about today. She simply agreed with what the man said, with what the angel said. Do you know that our life of faith, our walk with God, is as simply structured 
Testament as you saying to what the Word of God has said, breathed by the Holy Spirit, I agree with that. The promises were made long before she agreed. I want you to see that today. The eight promises that the angel gave this little teenage girl were already in motion long before she made the assertion that I am the handmaiden of the... How do we know that? Because the beginning of that end was told in Genesis chapter 3. Yeah. This little woman was not oblivious. She was a Jew. She was trained in the way of the Jews. She knew the Old Testament Scripture. And actually the words that she spoke on this occasion were words that David had already spoken. She was parroting another great man of God from her family, huh? Yeah. Lineage. Who had taught her how to deal with God. Just like I taught Juliana and Brandon how to deal with their son with regard to God. Because she spoke the words that said, Be it done unto me. David had said the same thing. He said, be it done unto us. And so Mary, this little mother, in her short acceptance speech, had simply said, whatever the promise of the Word of God that you have given me today as the mother of Jesus Christ, whatever you have said about what's going to come upon me, bring it on. Now I want you to notice something that she said. She did not ask the devil, how in the world can you do this? Huh? I pray for people all over the country. I've laid hands on the people, people all over the country. And many of them say, I don't understand. I don't understand how God's going to heal me of cancer. I don't understand how God's going to heal my heart. I don't understand how God's going to heal my family. I don't understand how can God do such and such. She didn't say that. That mother did not use the term can. She didn't say, how can God do this? She said, how shall this thing? In other words, tell me how it's going to do it. Tell me how this is going to happen. Hey, angel, I want to know. How, how's God going? I know He's going to do it because you promised me He would. How's He going to do it? How's this going to come about to me? And I want to tell you the same way that it came about to her is the same way it will come about to you. The Holy Spirit will cover over you. And God will do something on the inside of you. And the Holy Spirit will do a work because He's the one that wrote the book that told you what He would do. Oh yeah! She didn't say to Him, how can this be? The verse before this one, the angel said, For there is nothing impossible with God. There is no baby conception. There is no place, Mary, that you could be, that you could keep me from finding you, Mother. There is no place you can be. There is no problem you can be in. There is no circumstances that cover your home, your house, your job, your money, or that God can't find out where you are. That God doesn't know where you are because the Bible said the eyes of the Lord, they run to and fro and there they find the righteous. And that's what happened to Mary. Amen. Mary looked around and simply said, I accept that. I believe that. I'll take that. You just tell me how it shall happen. And I'm saying to you today that the things in your life that you need, that you're searching for, the happiness and the peace and the comfort that you are so desperate to locate will always happen the same way it happened for Mary. How shall the Holy Spirit is at work in the earth? He is the giver. He takes command from the throne room of God according to Acts chapter 1 and verse 2 and gives it to the people that He has chosen. And you, my friend, if you believe in the name of the Son of Almighty God, are the chosen children of God, a royal priesthood, holy unto God. You are the ones the Holy Spirit works in. You are the 
ones that he gives promise to. Mother, you are the one that he ministers to. And I'm going to prove it to you well, today. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. The angel had spoken eight promises to her. And we look at Mary as the mother of Jesus and say, What, what, a, what a blessed way. A whole religion has been put together about this woman. But I want to submit to you something today, and I want to put it out here for your consideration, that the promise God gave through the angel to Mary is no different than the promise He makes to any mother. Every mother has the promise of God. Now let's look. In Luke 1, 2, 28, He said, Hail, thou art highly favored. Certainly she was. But did you know that every mother, every mother, has the divine favor of God upon them? Yeah. Every one of them. Listen to Genesis 1, 27, 28. Said, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Hail, woman, thou art blessed and highly favored. Because he said in Genesis 1 that it would be through the woman that they would be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. You are blessed and favored of God in this day and age to be a mother. Because that mother is building a child that is being reared with the DNA of God. Just did. He said, God created man in his own image with his own T in A. They would grow and prosper in the image of God. He created man and woman. And through you and that union. You would replenish the earth with the DNA of Almighty God. That was God's plan. That wasn't my plan. Now we look at the world and we realize that this type of thing in the world has gone haywire. It's going off the deep end. We've got uh, uh, fathers with multiple mothers and, and what we call baby daddies. And the devil has subverted the truth of the Word of God and the plan of God until the society is running them up. But thank God today for brothers who will serve God and live for God and bless God and be a blessing to their children and mother their children as God planned for them to do and putting them the deep in a of almighty God. Amen. That's what she did. Yes. You are made in that image. Every one of you in here, male and female, were made in that image. Every offspring you bring into the world has that divine DNA. God charged you, mother, with a divine job. Mary had a divine job. To bring Jesus into the world. To transform the world. You have a divine job. And that divine job. Is that as a mother. You have brought offspring into the world. That would grow. And multiply. In wisdom. In stature. In favor with God. And in favor with men. Huh, I heard that somewhere. They said the same thing. About that little boy named Jesus. They did the same thing with Jesus. They brought Jesus to the temple. Just like they, we brought Max today. Glory to God. I'm preaching good because he's already asleep. Hallelujah. <laughs> and so they brought Jesus to the temple. And there he was dedicated. Who was he dedicated to? He was dedicated to the God of his DNA. Yeah, brother. If you're a mother today, you fulfilled your divine call. Luke 2 and 28, now watch this now, said the Lord is with thee. Because God has given the divine, divine mandate for motherhood, the Lord is in fact with every one of you also. He has promised that Mary and you have that divine blessing together. Luke 2 28 said, Blessed art thou among women. Now the Bible said in Proverbs chapter 31 
that your children would, would raise up and bless you and your husband would praise you. Sounds like to me, Mama, that you are blessed in your household. That you're blessed by the ones that you have reared. That you're blessed by the ones that you have given your life to. Mary was blessed by Jesus. When it came time for her to have a need at the marriage of Cana, all of a sudden they ran out of wine. They said, what do we do? And he went to Jesus and he said, woman, tenderly, mama, what in the world do you want me for now? It's not my time. But she turned around in faith-filled words and said, do whatever, whatever he tells you to do. And Jesus, in the Son of God, became what he really was to be and did work that day. And did you know what they said about that little baby? The same thing they'll say about your kid. The same thing they'll say that you will say about your son. Bless God, the best was yet to come. The last was better than the first. He became, and when his mother asked him to do something, it changed that environment. Let me tell you, you, my friend, the Lord, is with you and blessed are you among women. My mother calls me on the phone and she says, Son, God, I need so and so with you. I said, No, Mama, no, no, I'll go get it. She said, I need a car wash. Where I said, No, Mama, no, I'll go get it. Do you know what she is? She is blessing among all women because her son rises up and praises her and her husband would rise up and praise her and her children rise up and say blessed among women is that woman because without her I would not be. Yeah, right. huh? <laughs> Luke 2 30 said now watch this now. Fear not. Fear not. We've got mothers today that are rearing children. And rearing children is a tough thing. It's a hard thing. Because you want the best for your children. You want your children, and here's the bane of our society, ladies and gentlemen. You want your children to have more than you have. You don't want your child to grow up like you grew up. No, you don't want that for your child. You don't want them to go through the hard knocks of life. You'd like to protect them. You'd like to keep them away from hurt. You'd like to keep them away from car wrecks. You'd like to keep them away from injury. You'd like to keep them away from being dropped by their girlfriend. Or dropped by their boyfriend, wouldn't you? That would be a thing. But I'm here to tell you today, ladies and gentlemen, the bane of our existence is when we try beyond try beyond try to keep our children from experiencing the, the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. We, we, we absolutely are doing a disservice to our children whenever we are doing everything we can do to keep them out of harm's way. Let me tell you something, my friend. Mike and Mike here, he went through some problems and struggles in life. He knows what it is to prevail and he knows what it is to fail. And he knows what it is to call his mama on the phone and talk for the longest of times and let just spew about all of life's bad things that are happening. But to have a little mama say, listen son, as long as Jesus Christ is on the throne, you don't have a problem that God is not already ahead of. You don't have a hurt that God is not already admitting. You don't have a trial that God doesn't already have in control. And Jeremiah 29 and 11 said, I know the plans that I have for you, son. Marriage, God, no. Oh, glory to God. The plans that I have for you. And they, my son, are for good and not for evil. God is not in this to hurt you. God is not in this to destroy you. God is in this to make you into the image of the Son of the Almighty, God Jesus Christ. God is making you through those trials. God is helping you through those trials. God is designing and developing in you through those troubles. Yeah, fear not. Don't be afraid. Mary was a Jew who had been taught how to worship. The angel said to her, fear not. Mary realized that. Look at Isaiah 41, 13. 
For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand. Let me tell you something, son. You're going to go through some struggles in this life. Going to be some hard knocks. Going to be some moments when it ain't going to feel so good. Going to be some times of rejecting. Going to be some times of hurt. Going to be some times whenever you really, 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 really don't understand God. Don't understand if there is a God. Don't understand why God. Don't understand why God would play what you consider to be hide and seek with you. You come to church and you'll feel His presence and you walk out into the world and the next thing you know it's as dead as 4 o'clock. You can't find anything. Seems like you pray and it doesn't go higher than your forehead. But I want you to know what the Word said. For I, the Lord yeah. thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto yeah. thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Glory yeah. be to God. Yeah. Huh? yeah, that's the God I serve. I, I, I struggle whenever I hear people say things about how God doesn't understand and God doesn't know and God's not going to help and the days of touching and the days of healing and the days of salvation and everybody that's anybody going, I struggle with that because what I want is a God that will help me and that will be there and a God that will hold me by the right hand and lead me down a pathway of righteousness and a God that will give me the peace that passeth all understanding and a God that will give me joy when all around me is breaking down but I have on the inside of me a joy that comes from the Son of God because He gave it to me and gave it to me by His blood. Glory be to God. Amen. She looked around and she said, this, this man here, listen to what she said in her little Jewish training. She said that, 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 that fear not statement was a divine statement that came from the God I know as a Jew called El Shaddai. He's God Almighty. I've heard that statement before because he said it to Abraham when he promised that Abraham would birth a little baby named Isaac when he was 90 and his wife was older than that and it was not going to be easy. But he said to Abraham, don't be afraid, Abraham. She knew the El Shaddai, the blessed one who would minister and do for him because she had heard it in the what have you heard from the Word of God that would say to you, don't be afraid. Don't fear life. Don't fear what's happening. Put your trust in me. Because I will take you by the right hand. Watch this. I will take you by the right hand. Now watch this. Can you walk with me just a second? Yeah, I'll take you. Watch this. Now I can't. I, I, look here. I don't want you to run into that. Watch this right here. See this right here, John? You walking with me? Okay. No, 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 no. Come on, John. Now, I don't want you to run into anything, John. You see what I'm doing to John? John's got a little leg problem here, glory to God. But I'm walking in by his right hand. You see that? Glory to God. John and me. Now, John, I'm not going to let you stumble. Because I got you. Do I have you, John? I got you. And I'm going to take you right back and sit you right down right there. You got me, John? Now, when you turn around there, John, there's a seat that I've prepared for you. There we go. I took him from where he was. I led him around anything that would be a problem to him. I was there when you needed me, John. Whenever I got to the bump in the road, John, I took you by the right hand and led you through it. And that's the God that you have. Amen. Said that he was El Shaddai. Said that he was Yahweh Shalom. He's the God of peace. She knew him as the God of peace. She knew enough about God to know that when he said fear not, all she could do was make an acceptance speech. And that acceptance speech said, And I, the handmaiden of the Lord, be it done unto me according to what you have said. Not the road I want to go because she risked divorce. She risked being put out. Do you know what the Bible said about an unwed woman who had a child in the old day were stoned to death? Not what I want. But I agree with what you said to me. Because you told me how the God of El Shaddai and the Yahweh Shalom would come and cover me. 
And I would conceive the wonderful King of God. That wonderful King Jesus that would come into the world and be the salvation of God. Amen. Fear not, brother. Fear not, Father. Fear not, people. The salvation of God has been made manifest into the world. Your dear mother had the same promise. Now watch this now. From a better covenant. 2 Timothy 1 7 said, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. 1 John 4 18 said, There is no fear in love. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. He loves you. Right. He loves you. Hallelujah. He's cared for you. you Luke 1 30 then said that thou found favor with God. Luke 1 31 said thou shalt, now watch this now. He said thou shalt conceive in thy womb. Yes, mother, you would conceive a child that would be raised in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. That is God's prophecy for you from Genesis 1, 27 and 28. The mother of that child would be God's people. Now watch this now, watch this now, watch this now, because I'm about to get done. The mother of that child, now watch this now, would be God's people. And those children, he would be a God to them. The children would be God's people. And He would be a God to them. Now, Mother, I want you to consider with me these words. How much do you love your children? How much do you care for them? How much do you concern yourself with them? Well, the Word of God said that every child born of a mother would multiply and replenish the earth. And he would be, they would be his people. And he would be their nurturer. He would be their caregiver. He would be their peace. He would be their joy. He would be their support. He would be their righteousness. And he would be their soon coming king. Amen. 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 Heaven is made from the love of God. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That little woman said, you're going to bring forth a son. And it was through that son that the world was changed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You mothers have brought forth those who would, now watch this now, you brought forth those that would change the world too. Mm -hmm. How do we know that? Because the book of Acts said those men that were in there and in the upper room and received the Holy Spirit and those women, they changed the world. The Bible said they turned the world upside down. She birthed a child that would change the world and give salvation. You birthed children that would turn the world upside down because God through Christ would live on the Oh, really live on the inside? The Bible said in Colossians 1.27, Christ being in you is the hope of glory. Mm. Yeah. You, mother, have brought forth those who would receive the salvation and become the sons of God. Romans 8.14 and 15 said, For as many as are led, now listen to this, they are the sons of God. Sons of God, you have birthed sons of God, daughters of God. Mary was called the daughter of Zion. <clears throat> you have birthed that. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby everybody that knows Christ can say, Abba, my dear Papa, Daddy. 
And then in Luke 1, 38, it said, Thou shalt call his name Jesus. Yep. Mary had a name above all names that she was going to give her baby. And he was the salvation of God to all mankind. But dear mother, your children in Christ have a name also. Ephesians 3.14 said, For this cause I bow my knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Watch that next line. Of whom all, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Your child and you have a new name written down in glory. That new name was written because of a name. And that name is Jesus Christ. Yeah. And at the name of Jesus, every knee would bow and every tongue would confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lord to the glory of God. And the exalted Lord brought about a whole new family yeah. through mothers just like you. Luke 10 and 20 said, watch this. He said to the disciples, notwithstanding, in this rejoice not. Don't rejoice that the, the devil bows to you. Don't rejoice in the works that you have done, that the spirits are subject. But rather, you should be rejoicing because you have a name that is written in God. Amen. 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 You have a name that's written in glory. You have a name that's written in glory. That name works in your children. That name is doing exceedingly abundantly above all that you're able to ask or think. Mother, in your acceptance speech, you simply said, I'm not my own. I belong to Jesus. I'm the handmaiden of the Lord. He purchased me, I'm all his, bought with a price, the blood of Jesus. I'm not my own, I'm I, the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me. I'm not my own. I belong to Jesus. He purchased me. I'm, I'm all here. I'm bought with a that are living lives 
with boxing gloves on and trying to box their way out mm. against you. For those that are saying, I can make it without God, Lord. it's easier for me to live my life my way in spite of the troubles and the trials and the tribulations that I go through. I always, it, it hurts and I hate it and I'm mad and I'm upset with God, but, 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 but I, I just can't bring myself to find the ability to say, I'm the servant of God. But today is your day. Hallelujah. Today is your opportunity. Today is your moment. <laughs> God, I thank you today that for those that have been stagnant in their faith, today is their day to say, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. Be it done to me according to your word. For those who have been unchallenged by the word of God, that have heard the scripture today, the eight promises that was given to the woman, and the exact result of those promises coming to be, and I've been unchanged by it, but today I heard the word, and my spirit man is needing to be charged, challenged, and changed. I speak to that person today, and I say to that person, be changed. Be alive on the inside. Paul said that you would be quickened into life. For the unsaved, for the stagnant, for the unchanged and unchallenged. For those, God, that have their faith being challenged by sickness, hurt, Adversity. To those I say today that God is here. Mingling and ministering in your spirit. To manifest himself. And to take you by the right hand. And lead you out. Now I don't know God who those are for. But I know, Father, by the Holy Spirit that those four things have been presented to me today from the Spirit of God. Now, Father, as I conclude this prayer with every head bowed and every eye closed, I pray in the name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit would manifest Himself in the lives of everyone in here. God, that they would say based on being unsaved, being stagnant, not being changed, not being challenged, their faith being attacked, that when I give them the opportunity to rise to their feet and raise their hands and make the acceptance speech, by the handmaiden of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. God, they would rise and the Holy Spirit would minister. And the Holy Spirit would set free the unsaved. The Holy Spirit would quicken the stagnant. That the Word of God would challenge and change the ones that need that. And that that person that's having their faith attacked and tried would stand to honor the fact that Jesus Christ is Lord of lords and King of kings and seated at the right hand of God, thereby making intercession for your needs, for your way, and taking you by the right hand and leading you out. Now, if that resonates with anyone in this building, I want you to stand to your feet, and I want you to raise your hands, and I want you to say, Lord, I receive you today. If that resonates with you, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. And say, Lord, I receive that today. I receive that today, God. I receive that word today, God. 
I receive that message today, God. I receive today the King of Kings and Lord of Lords to save my life. I receive the fact that I am challenged and changed by the Word of God. I receive the fact today that my faith is stronger today because I simply say, nevertheless, Lord, not my will, but Your will be done. And I, the handmaiden of the Lord, be it done unto me according to Your Word. I receive it today, God. I take it today. I'm challenged by 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 it today. Sing this course with me. I'm not my own. I belong to Jesus. He purchased me. I'm all his. Bought with a price, the blood of Jesus. I'm not my own. I'm here. Give the Lord a hand, guys.